Hey everyone, Joe here, and in this video, I'm going to introduce a project that I will be attempting to build, and that project is a DIY remote starter system for my car, specifically for a 2013 Subaru Outback. If you've never heard of a remote starter, it is basically a device that can start your car without needing to use your keys. This is useful because you can start your car from inside your house, and not only does this warm up your engine, you can have your climate controls turned on and get your car to a comfortable temperature by the time you're ready to drive. That means cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I actually have a fair amount of experience installing remote starters from a job I had in the past, so this gives me an advantage on how to approach this project. I know what you're thinking, why bother making one? Well this is more to see if I can actually build one and hopefully learn some new things along the way. It's more of like a personal challenge, and I figure I share it with you guys and maybe you will learn something too. But let me be perfectly clear, this will not save you any money. If you are just interested in getting a remote starter and installing it yourself, this video series might be too involved, but hey, it still might be useful. I am pretty excited to get going, so let's get started. Before building any project, I like to get my ideas done on paper. This is a simple block diagram I drew up. It will help me think about the interface, the features I want, and what needs to be controlled. This is by no means an end-all be-all representation of the system, but it is a great starting point. I'm going to think of the remote starter as a device with a bunch of inputs and a bunch of outputs. The inputs are shown here on the left. The first ones you see here are of course power and ground. Everything electronic needs a power source of some kind. In this case, it will be the car's battery. Next we have the brake pedal. For those of you not familiar with remote starters, to drive a remotely started car, you stick your key into the cylinder, turn it to the on position without cranking it, and shift into gear as you usually would. Before shifting gear, however, you will naturally hit the brake pedal. This acts as an off switch to the remote starter. It is just a sneaky way to turn off the system when someone is ready to drive. Next we have is the neutral safety switch. This is something that all automatic vehicles have in common. It basically serves as a safety device that prevents someone from starting the car in gear. I'd like to know when the switch is active. It is more of a precautionary thing. The last thing I want is my car to drive off when I started it. All right, here we have is the hood pin switch. And this is the first input that I'm gonna to have to add to the car. When someone is working on the car, they might have the hood up. The hood pin switch basically just tells me that someone is possibly sticking their hands in the engine bay. This is an important safety feature as it can save someone from serious injury. Let's say someone was working in the engine bay and their hand was right next to the cooling fan by the radiator. Had the remote start activated the car, the fan would kick on and damage the person's hand, causing serious injury. Next, I have the lock signal. This one is kind of weird because I'll be utilizing my existing keyless entry system to start the car. The idea here is that if I press the lock button on my factory remote a certain number of times, the car will start. This is my simple way of not having to supply a remote myself, as I'm perfectly happy with the one Subaru gave me. Last but not least, I have the service switch. This is the second input I will have to install in my car. It is simply a switch that will be flipped before I hand over my car for service or valet parking. I'd rather not have the system operational when the car is not in my possession. Now for the outputs. Since a remote starter acts like someone is turning the key, it will have to control some of the wires on the key cylinder. These are the ignition, starter, and accessory wire. Each car has a different combination of these, but after doing some online research, I think my car has these wires at the key cylinder. Two ignition, two starter, and one accessory. This makes a total of five outputs just to get the car started. I would also like to know if my remote start was successful, but I might not be able to hear the car running depending on where I started from. So to give myself a visual, I'm going to turn the parking lights on to give it a good confirmation. Last output is the factory anti-theft system. I need to bypass it. For my car and for many other modern cars, there is a RFID chip inside the key. Basically, when the key is in the key cylinder, the antenna on the cylinder powers the chip in the key and then moments after, a code is sent to the car's computer from within the key wirelessly. This will happen very quickly and well within the time frame when someone is inserting the key and starting the car manually. To get around this, I will be sacrificing one of my spare keys to override this anti-theft feature temporarily when the remote start is signaled to crank the car. I'll show more details on this later on in the video series. Well, I think that's it for the planning stage. I'm not exactly sure how many videos this project will take, 
but let's hope it's not too many. Just want to give a quick shout out to my latest subscriber, Paul. You are awesome, and thank you so much for watching this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful in any way, consider giving the video a like. If you'd like to be updated on this project and projects like this, please subscribe and turn on notifications to this channel. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them in the comments below.